Pickle? Yes. Hit the air right time. Time for Monday Morning Fallout. Monday Morning Fallout, of course. When we overreact to the football weekend, lots of overreact to this weekend. Uh, on this, the final week of only small schools. Yes. So we'll get into that. That's part of my thoughts. But we will start with my three big thoughts. Thought number one, top dogs. I think, so we're now four, we're a month into the season, if you think about it that way. Yes. We're a month into the season. Which seems crazy. So, for four and below, obviously. And I think that there are a couple, or I think there's a, a, of if you look class by class, I think that there are some classifications in which we don't necessarily have a clear number one. Okay? 1A Division One strikes me as a perfect example of a class where we do not have a clear number one. Um, I think that um, 4A Division Two, we've only seen Carthage play once. They're one and zero through four weeks, so we don't. I, I just think I think they're I think they're probably the best team in 4A Division Two, although West Orange targets them to say. Um, but you know, I think there's not enough data to tell. I think 3A Division Two is a little bit up in the air. Um, I think 2A Division Two, Martin Hamlin, uh, and then I think 1A Division Two. You know, if you want to go with Balmeray, although Balmeray does have a loss in the year. But I do think that there are three class cl- classifications, three divisions, whatever you want to say. Three that have clear, at this point, number one teams. Clear teams to beat. That doesn't mean nobody else has a chance. That mm. just means that they have established themselves as clear teams to beat. The biggest of these is in 4A Division One, where I don't think, at this point, anybody can look at the resume that... Argyle has put together and think any other team should be the number one team in 4A Division One. Apologies to Lampasas, apologies to Waco La Vega, and again, I think those teams are going to be in it, and I think those teams are contenders, and we'll see what happens when they get together. But right now, looking at the resume, what Argyle has done, I think establishes themselves as the clear number one in 4A Division One. Right now, on September 21st. That can change tomorrow. But right now, it's got to be them. The other one, the next one, and this might be a surprise, but I think it's Brock. Yeah. Okay? And this is with all due respect to Grandview, mm-hmm. who's obviously 3-0 and the two-time defending champs. But what Brock has put together so far in the early going, capping it off this past week, going on the road and beating a, four, a ranked 4A team in Iowa Park, I think right now Brock has got to be the clear number one in, four, in 3A Division One, And again... That doesn't mean that Grandview or Wall or Pottsboro or Malakoff or, or Hallettsville can't beat them. That just means that right now on September 21st, it's Brock. Yeah. They're number one. They've got to be. The other one is Shiner in 2A Division One. My goodness. So they had the, the – they had the uh, – And the, they've had a difficult schedule. They had the wild game of the week. Uh-huh. So they have – they went on the road and they beat East Bernard 13-7 to in overtime. And – I just like that. That is combined with the fact that they've beaten uh, a ranked Hallettsville team. Uh, that's a three A team. They punched up every. They week. played Smithville, who's a four A team and a pretty uh, like a decent four A team. I, I don't think Smithville is going to win the state championship, but they're a decent four A team. They beat them, uh, and then they beat Blanco, who's a three A team, three Division One team, I believe. Now they go on the road, on the road, turn the ball over seven times, yeah, and still beat East Bernard in overtime. <laughs> that. Is impressive. That to me, for now, again, September twenty first establishes themselves as the top dog in two division one. Thought number two: Road Dogs. The two college football results that impressed me the most over the weekend in the state of Texas were the teams that went on the road. One of them, I believe, it's our first game outside the state of Texas was Texas State going on the road and beating Louisiana Monroe. Yes. Good win. First time since Louisiana since 2015 they've beaten Louisiana Monroe. And they did it without their starting quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Brady McBride was out again, apparently due to COVID protocols. Mm-hmm. They did with Tyler Vitt. Tyler Vitt was able to do it. And more importantly, you saw that defense take an important step forward. They basically sealed the game with that pick six to end the, in the, in, you know, in, in the final minutes. Impressive stuff. The other one was SMU. Now, SMU tra- didn't travel as far. They just went up the road to Denton. Mm-hmm. But they were very impressive. They handed it They rang up 700 yards total offense and 
made it look easy against North Texas. Mm-hmm. A huge day for Ulysses Bentley. A huge day from Shane Bouchel. Reggie. Reggie Roberson. They looked every bit the part of an AAC contender. So the teams that were on the road, I think, impressed me the most. And thought number three, big dogs. It's a canine thing. And that is, now we're into week five of the Texas high school football season, and we're going to be joined by the large classifications, mm-hmm. 6A and 5A. They are going to join us this week. Welcome back. Um, and so, this is when it's kind of striking me that we're going to have two concurrent staggered seasons. Yeah. I think we knew it, and now it's here. Well, and, and that's going to be even really weird once the small schools start playoffs. Like, go- that's the next We are going to have teams that are 4-0 and taking the field this week mm-hmm. and a whole swath of teams that are 0-0 mm-hmm. playing concurrently in the same season. And it's going. I think it's just going to take us all an extra half step to consider it mm-hmm. every single week. Now, for those who are in, uh, worried about the nomenclature, we are going to continue to call this week five. Yes. And so whenever, whenever the state championships go on, that will be week 21 mm-hmm. for, the, uh, for the big schools. But that's just the way we're doing it. That's going to take some getting used to. And it's just part of the weird world, weird world that we live in right now. So, those are my three big thoughts. Three helmet stickers. A helmet sticker to Rockport Fulton tight end Caden Harder he had five catches 133 yards and two touchdowns receiving and you're thinking like okay like those are good numbers Mm -hmm. five catches 133 yards two touchdowns receiving keep in mind that Rockport Fulton runs the slot T yep and they were playing and they're playing Corpus Corpus Christi Christi Miller Miller. (laughs) state ranked Corpus Christi Miller so helmet sticker for tight end Caden Harder of Rockport Fulton a tight end or I'm sorry a helmet sticker for UTSA linebacker Trevor Harmonson Mm -hmm. they take down Stephen F. Austin, and they did it with, I thought, a really impressive defensive effort led by Trevor Harmonson. Uh, He was living in the backfield. He had half a sack. I think he had four tackles for loss. He was all over the field, the clear, in my opinion, leader and the clear best defender for UTSA. Roadrunners, uh, uh, the Roadrunners linebacker Trevor Harmonson gets a helmet sticker from me. And a helmet sticker to Pampa running back Cornelius Landers. He carried the ball 10 times for 93 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. He had two catches for 74 yards and a touchdown, and he returned to kickoff 80 yards for a touchdown. A helmet sticker for Pampa running back Cornelius Landers. Three teams to worry about. Let us officially worry about Burton. Mm -hmm. Burton, now 0-4, been outscored 77-31 this year. They cannot get this offense going. Um, Most importantly, this past week they dropped a, a district game to Iola. They're not own one in, in, in district play. And look, I mean, it doesn't get any easier. They get Ganado this week. Yeah. It's Ganado, Snook, Somerville. I mean, th- we are now talking about Burton, who I believe started the year as the favorite in division or in our, in that district, mm-hmm. now suddenly kind of scuffling a little bit and needing to, to right the ship. A little worried about Burton. Let's worry about Baylor. Yeah. So for those who missed the news, I guess it was after we, or I guess it was Friday. We didn't have a show Friday. Yeah, their game with Houston got canceled because right of afternoon. because of uh, because of COVID in the program, um, and now the first game of the Dave Aranda era will be a conference game. Yeah, and by the way, that's I mean, there's no guarantee they can play, Mm-mm. so we don't know. I'm a little worried about Baylor, and. San Augustine. Now, I'm not super worried about San Augustine, but I'll tell you that as far as results that surprised me on Friday night, um, their loss to uh, their loss to uh, to Winsboro, thirty seven to six, kind of caught my eye. Now they have, you know, they are now. And I'm not worried about them. One and one. They got the weird one and one schedule. Yeah. They have a game canceled due to lightning, and they beat Elkhart. But the offense. Kind of got to get into gear here. And, and that was a little bit disappointing for them. I'm a little bit worried about St. Augustine. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, I'm not not super worried. But, like, if it's not them in uh, Region 3, then, like, suddenly it gets really weird out mm-hmm. there. So, a little worried about St. Augustine after the Friday night's loss. Three teams to watch. We'll watch Lano. How about them Yellow Jackets? 
That was a crazy game. That was a wild ass game. I told y'all all all me being from Lano stuff aside, that's one of the best finishes to a high school football game that I've ever seen. So Lano scores twice in the final like two minutes, basically. Yeah, minute and sixteen seconds. They pulled basically they pulled the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. They quite they, literally the Cowboys. The Cowboys uh uh kind of took took the Lano playbook. Yeah. Which was score, get an onside kick, score again. Then they came up with the final stop there in the final minutes as uh, you know a very potent San Saba offense was driving for the win. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they win 35-31. They're 4-0 for the first time. I think it's, think it's 08. Yep. Um, and, yeah, Matt, Green's co Matt Green Company, the Yellow Jackets. Keep an eye on the Lano Yellow Jackets. UTEP. And, look, <laughs> I'm, I'm mentioning this here because it's probably the last time we're going to talk about them in this segment. Okay? But UTEP's to, uh, above 500. Yeah. After, after more than one game. For the first time since like 2014, go miners. Miners beat Houston Baptist. It was not pretty, but it's it's. But it's a effective. win is a win. <laughs> and when you're talking about a program that hasn't won more than one game in three years, the fact that they are two and one, like yes, good job UTEP. And finally, keep an eye on Rio Vista. Rio Vista is suddenly four and zero off to a hellacious start. Um, they've got the big win. Their their big signature win was their opener against Santo, mm -hmm. but they are four and zero, looking very very good. Coach Casey Black has done an excellent job there at Rio Vista. Into the teeth of district play now, and if they pl they play Bosqueville to open, who depending on what you think of Crawford is either I I would say that because Crawford's undefeated, Bosqueville's probably the district favorite right now. But if Rio Vista can go and win this game, then suddenly things get very very serious for the Eagles. Keep an eye on that Rio Vista, a team to watch. Those are my those are my three teams to watch, and that is Monday morning fallout.